proudly we hail. where the American stage begins, here's another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your army to bring you this story. As proudly we hail the United States Army. presentation is titled, One Little Move at a Time. This is a story of two riflemen who find themselves behind the enemy lines and decide to solve their problems step by step. One of them gets a good deal more than he ever bargained for. Our first act curtain will rise right after I talk to all you young gals listening in. Say, tell me, gals, are you kind of tired of the same old office routine? Well, okay, now you can get away from it all. Join the Women's Army Corps. In the Women's Army Corps, you can escape from the humdrum routine of your present life. Visit exciting places in your country and abroad. Make new friends among young men and women all over the world. And you'll have plenty of leisure to enjoy your travels, too. You see, you'll get a 30-day paid vacation each and every year. Plus many, many weekend passes and, of course, the holidays. So why don't you join the WAC? You visit your local United States Army recruiting station and talk it over with the real friendly people there. Remember, gals... You'll enjoy life more in the Women's Army Corps. And now, your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, One Little Move at a Time. Every time I can get leave from my outfit stationed in Frankfurt, my wife and I get into the car and take off for a visit to her folks in a little French town called Brie. It's a nice trip through interesting country, we must have made it at least a hundred times. But it never fails. As soon as I see the road marker which reads, Brie, <laughs> I always start thinking of how it was the very first time I was there. It'll be uh, 11 years now. But I remember it as though it were yesterday. And it always starts me off. Here I am married to Annette, and happy about the whole thing. And yet if I hadn't happened to be at the CP that night back in 44, <laughs> if Sergeant Downs had had a better sense of direction... If a particular German soldier, whose name I'll never know, hadn't happened to be asleep at his post, well, who knows? My wife, Annette, is French, and she's a girl from Brie. She's very romantic and sentimental. When we hit the outskirts of Brie, she starts reminiscing. You know, she believes that fate brought us together. Well, I'd go with that, but not in the same direction. the night when you and Sergeant Downs burst into Papa's workshop. Yeah. I knew even then that one day we would be married. Yeah, I'll bet you did. Oh, look, there were many boys in the town, but I could have married them, but not me. I would have none of them. I always said, my marriage has been made in heaven, and I will know the man when I see him. All right, if you want to keep all the facts straight. The only reason you met me was because it was raining. Well, the rain does come from heaven, does it not? Oh, your face was so dirty, and you needed a shave. And your clothes were all covered with mud. And you had your rifle pointed straight at me. There was a carbine. And I said to myself, this American soldier, one day he will be my husband. <laughs> Isn't that the way <laughs> Some guys don't get married because they have cold feet. No, I got myself a wife because I had wet feet. No, go on. Tell me you are sorry. Look, all I wanted to do was get some dry socks for the squad. And look what happened to me. Well, long about this point, Annette gets a little dreamy-eyed and sort of lost in thought. So I don't say anything. After all, why should I spoil a romantic moment? Now, maybe you don't ordinarily think a first sergeant is a particularly romantic guy. But believe me, we've got nothing against romance as long as it doesn't interfere with the work of the company. But the night I met Annette, I wasn't a first sergeant. I was the leader of a rifle squad, and my feet were wet, and I was very tired. 
I'd gone back to the CP for a reason that you might never think of, but a reason that's very real to soldiers who've been standing around in pools of water for a couple of days. Wow, it isn't Haynes. Well, hi, Sergeant Down. Say, where is everybody? Well, the old man went out to look over the first platoon. And everybody else is, I assume, out doing something or other necessary to win the war. Now, what can I do for you? Well, Lieutenant Mayberry said for me to come back here and see if I can get some dry socks for the men of my squad. The cooks are supposed to be drying out a whole batch of socks for the men back at the kitchen. Gordon went for them. He ought to be here soon. How is it up in the line? Wet. I'll send Gordon back with the socks and some hot coffee. Well, I hope he shows up before we have to move out. F Company has to take that town up ahead. Uh, what's the name of it again? Bree. Oh, yeah, yeah, Bree. And we have to support them on the left. Uh, let me get that phone. Easy one. Come in, easy one. Come in. Who is it, Sergeant Down? Uh, it's battalion, sir, for you. I'll take it. Easy one, we've been waiting. I haven't had any word. Yeah, right. Hasn't there been any word from F Company, Sergeant? No, sir. F Company is supposed to be in Bree now. Sergeant Henry. Yes, sir. Are you ready to move the CP? Yes, sir. Are the messengers here from each platoon? Yes, sir. We're supposed to move out to support F Company, but as it stands, I have to wait till the battalion gives the order. Sounds. You've been here all the time? Yes, sir. Have you heard from Captain Wilson of F Company? Not a word, sir. Well, what's the situation there in Bree? Has F Company gone in? Are they waiting or what? Down. Yes, sir. You know the route F Company took. Find Captain Wilson and see what the situation is. Take a man with you. Report back as soon as you can. Yes, sir. Let's go, Haynes. Huh? Hey, wait a minute, Downs. All I did was come back to get some dry socks for my squad. Well, that's how it goes. Say, what do you figure happened to F Company? Uh, we found out what had happened to F Company, all right. Just a few minutes after we left, the news came in on the phone to Captain Rhodes, the CP. F Company had waltzed into Brie ahead of schedule. There was no resistance. It seems the German commander had goofed. He thought his orders were to withdraw. Well, his colonel straightened that out in a hurry. The jury's counterattack with a whole regiment and F Company had to get out of there fast. Now, as I say, we found it all out, but quite a bit later. As a matter of fact, almost too late. As we approached Brie, all was quiet. But suddenly... It seemed as though there was an earthquake. That's the third, Hank! Hey. Brother. How many men does that seem to be coming from? Well, I hope I am wrong, but it... It seems to be on both sides. That's what I thought. That machine gun fire, that tower, as you can tell. Yeah, but it's over to the right. That company must have pulled back. Oh, that's great. What are we doing here? You got some place to go? Don't budge onto this ditch. Yeah, but where are we? The nearest I can figure, Bree is just over to the right. That's where all the firing's coming from. Uh, uh, oh, it stops. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, what do we better do? The question is, who's on first? Or who's in Bree? Did F Company pull back or didn't they? Well, that's the old man wanted to know. Come on. Where are we going? We're going into Bree. Whether we stay there or not, what kind of welcome we'll get is something I'd rather not discuss at this time. We were in a wooded area, the outskirts of the town. We moved as quietly as we could. Now, actually, you might think our problem was quite simple. All we had to do was find out who was in the town. But in combat, things that seem simple, have a habit of becoming complicated. Now, you might suppose that the F Company commander would telephone, but his lines could have been cut. He could have used radio, but his equipment could have gone dead. Now, he could have sent a runner back, but the runner could have been captured. The reason I'm saying all this now is because that was what was going through my own mind at the time. And that's what I keep telling the men in my own outfit today. No machinery or equipment or a weapon has ever been invented. That's going to replace a man himself. There's no such thing as a foolproof, mechanically perfect war. But uh, getting back to Sergeant Downs and me in the woods in front of Bree, we came to a path that wound among the trees. 
Now, we hadn't walked more than 50 yards when we heard voices coming towards us. You didn't have to be a professor of languages to know that the voices were not speaking English. We both dived behind some underbrush, and we waited. That's clear. Looks like a whole platoon to me. Which... I guess they went past us. Let's get out of here. Hold it. Uh, I guess steps. Yeah. Hey, we almost ran right into those two. Yeah. That must have been Gerhardt and Fritz lagging behind. Looked like two typical gold bricks to me. Where do you where do you figure that Jerry platoon is heading? I think they're digging foxholes. If they're digging foxholes in front of Bree, that means they must be in Bree. Let's see if we can get back. Well, we sure can't go through them, Dowd. I know. So we'll just have to get around them. You hear that? Yeah, mortars. Yeah, ours. And there'll be artillery, too. That means we're going to counterattack. But first, they're going to plant to these guys. That's a good idea. The only thing wrong with it is that we're out here, too. We have to find some cover somewhere. Yeah, where? I don't know. But we can't stay here. I, uh, I once had a grandfather who used to tell uh, tall stories about the time he was a sea captain. And his favorite story was the one about the time his ship was on fire and the water was full of sharks and there were no lifeboats. <laughs> I remember he said, um, Well, sir, the flames drove me to the rail and I had to jump overboard right into the mouth of the sharks. So when I asked him what happened, he said, uh, nothing. I, the sharks ate me. <laughs> that was a story I kept thinking about now. The Germans were all around us. We had no place to hide. And our own shells were starting to fall close. We started to run through the woods because the worst place you can be when mortars are coming is under a tree. We reached the edge of the woods and we could see some buildings in the distance. We stopped running. Now, even though the shells were still coming in and our hope of safety wasn't somehow getting into a cellar, we just had to stop. There were sure to be jerrys in the house. Now, just then, a mortar burst no more than 20 feet away. That decided us. We just had to take our chances. So we ran for the nearest house. Suddenly, down, stripped and fell into a hole. It was well camouflaged. We hadn't seen it. I dived in after him, and Downs was rolling around on the bottom of the hole, fighting with a German. Don't let him yell. Cut him. I should take care of him for a while. Wow. I fell right into the hole with this guy. He's got one of their light machine guns. How come we didn't spot him from the woods? Never mind that. Lucky he didn't spot us. You know why? He was asleep. Yeah. I fell right on him and woke him up. We we're buying time, all right. The only trouble is we're... All we're getting is a couple of minutes at a throw. Now, you take this joker. He's bound to have a buddy. Where's his buddy? Hey! Hey! Oh, talk about the devil. Hey! Oh, yeah. Uh, that means exactly what it sounds like. He wants Heinrich to come here. Where's here? It sounds like he's in that house. Uh oh, sounds like he's getting a little nervous about Heinrich. Hey, what are you doing? I'm going to put on Heinrich's helmet. Just poke my head over the edge and see what's up. Oh, I hope this guy doesn't get a notion to come out and look for Heinrich. That's exactly what he's doing. There's three of them coming out the house heading this way. Now what? Yeah, well, what? They're stopping. Uh, they're going back to the house. What happened? As well, near as I can figure, they wanted our boy Heinrich to come into the house, but they think he's asleep. Well, in a sense, that's true. So they're just going to let him stay out here. That means we're okay for another couple of minutes, anyhow. In another couple of minutes, it should be dark. Now, uh, I think we've got a chance. The way I figure it, this area is being held by a platoon. We saw most of them go out past us, where they're probably going to dig in. Platoon headquarters is probably in that house. We know there's at least three of them in there. The Jerrys who are out digging foxholes are going to stay where they are. The three of them in that house aren't going to come out here in this rain. Now, just as soon as it's dark enough, we can start looking for a place where we can sneak through to the outfit. We better move fast. If there's going to be a counterattack, I'd sure hate to be caught in the middle. Why don't we worry about just one thing at a time? Why did it have to be me? Why did I have to go back to the CP for those miserable dry socks? 
Just think, I wouldn't even be here now. Now you sound bitter. You should never be bitter. It makes you grow old before your time. I should only live to grow old. You will. One day you'll have grandchildren. And you'll rock them on your knee and you'll tell them all about this. But you'll probably build it up. You'll make it sound like you knocked off the whole German army all by yourself. Hey, what's that? Ah, uh, looks like one of their Volkswagens. Stopped by the house. A guy's getting out. Looks like an officer. Oh, no. What does he want? Uh-oh. Wouldn't you know it? If you don't like the idea of being in the house, he wants him out here in the hall. Yep. That's right. Did they come out? How many grenades you got? Uh, three. Look, I can't hear what he's saying to him, but it's a cinch he's giving him what for. You throw your grenades, I'll open up with my M1. Then what? Then we fly out of here. Where to? What do you want me to do? Give you the big picture? All we can do is make one little move at a time. Come on. The lecture's still going on. Let's go with those grenades right now. All right. Throw it. Start shooting. This way. Your United States Army is presenting the proudly we hail production of One Little Move at a Time. And One Little Move at a Time, the right one, is all it takes to secure your future. Today, American soldiers get the finest technical training in the world. Every man is a specialist, a master at his job. And the Army sees to it that every man is trained to do his job, and what's more important, to do his job right. Because the Army is growing so rapidly, today's soldiers are being promoted fast. Oh, you work hard, sure, but... Well, believe me, the rewards are really well worth it. Right now, the Army needs healthy, intelligent men and women, volunteers from 18 to 34. So if you've got what it takes, then you think seriously about an Army career. Stop in at your nearest United States Army recruiting station today. Get all the facts about what the Army has to offer you. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of One Little Move at a Time. In the late summer of 1944, two American infantrymen, Sergeant Downs and Corporal Haynes, who was telling the story, found themselves behind the German lines in a small French town called Paris. The American army is getting set to attack and take the town. But right now, this isn't going to help either Downs or Haynes. Downs and I jumped out of the hole and ran. The Germans didn't know there were only the two of us to deal with. After all, they had to figure this was an attack, and instinctively they ran for cover. Now, we ran past the house and up a little street. In back of us, we could hear shooting, but that was all right. For another few seconds, the Jerrys really wouldn't know what they were firing at. Right now, we couldn't take a chance of trying to get back through the line. But there was another chance we had to take. Because on our right was another house. We were going to trust to luck that there were no Germans in it and that we could hide there for a while. So we dashed around the back of it, found the rear door, it was open, and we went in. Shut the door. Oh, how do you do, mademoiselle? American. Oh, Papa, Papa, this is American. What? American. Have, have you taken our town again? Not quite. Oh, the Americans. They were here before. Then the Bosch, they came back. Now have you come back? Uh, welcome. My name is Edgar Vier. This is my daughter, Annette. The guy, things are rough all over, but especially tough ah, around here. These brave, wonderful army. Oh, we are liberated. Well, honey, the American army is wonderful, all right, but all you got now is just the two of us. Oh, you two, that is enough. You will make the bush run. <laughs> hey, Downs, is this, is this girl real? Uh, uh, silly girl, be silent. These Americans, they have much trouble. Yeah. By now, the Germans know there was no attack. They know there are some of us loose behind their lines. They're going to start looking for us. Where can we hide? But you can hide here. But the Jerry's are going to turn this whole town inside out. If they find us here, you're in a jam. A jam? Jam? Papa? Papa, what is jam? Does perhaps he mean jambo? <laughs> oh, but we have not had jambo since the world began. Nevertheless, you will hide here. Yeah, but where? Your attic? Go oh, search that. Your cellar? They won't miss out there either. Unless you got some secret room or passageway. 
There is only one thing we can do. Annette, go to the window and stand guard. Warn us the moment the Bosch appears. Yes, Papa. Come with me. What's this? What does it appear? It is my workshop. I am the carpenter of Brie. You will hide here. Here? Well, I don't see where we can... <laughs> sure. Sure, why not? So what are you laughing at, Don? Take a good look, will you, pal? Uh-oh. Uh, what are those? What do they look like, Haynes? They look like coffins. Give the man a cigar. Yes, unfortunately, since the war, business in coffins is quite brisk. Oh, Papa, the Germans are coming. Each of you will get inside of one. But if we're stuck inside those, we don't have a chance. You talk as though we got a real good chance now. I will not seal the lids. You will have air to breathe. Where are the Germans now? Yes, Madame Cardinet's place. Ah, fortunate. We are in love. They have chosen the cafe first. That will detain them at least ten minutes. Run next door and tell Francois to come here. Let him bring Jeannette, the children, the entire family. Then go to Emile's. Get people, as many people as possible. Now, you two, help me bring these coffins into the parlor. We will put them out on chairs. Annette, the most important, do not forget the priest. Yes, Papa. Hey, what are we going to do? Boy, do you always need a diagram? We're going to have a funeral service. Ah, that is correct. I know you have never taken the part of corpses before, but it is quite simple. Yeah, yeah. See what I mean, kid? Stick with me. We just make one little move at a time. In just about five minutes, the coffins were set up in Edgar's parlor. Downs and I were each inside. The room was filled with people. Suddenly, there was a loud knock on the door. We will search this house. Search this house, Lieutenant? Some Americans are hiding in this town. If you intend to search this house, Lieutenant, I cannot prevent you. Even though I have nothing to hide. But uh, now, just now, this is not a happy time. Oh, oh, I see. My, my brother and my father both at the same time killed. I'm sorry, but it is the war. An artillery shell entered the house. I hope it was an American shell. I, I have my duty to perform. I understand. You, men, start the search. There will be no unnecessary noise. Grand-père. Mon pauvre grand-père. Et mon bon oncle Henri. We shall discharge our duty as quickly as is possible. Follow me. Edgar, I came as quickly as I... Oui. What is this? Who is dead? Uh, Father Pierre, inside these coffins are two American soldiers hiding from the bush. Oh, I see. Very well. I shall conduct the service. Ah, I knew you would, Father. Thank you. Yes. Uh, tell me, Edgar, who are they supposed to be? My father and my brother, Henri, killed by a shell. Ah, I see. Is in order here. You may continue with your service. Hello, Miss Gordon. Ah, I'm sorry I made you partake in a lie, Father Pierre. But it is not a lie, Edgar. Your father and your brother were killed by a shell in the First World War. Annette, have they gone? Yes, Father. They've gone into the woods. You had better come out now. Oh, <laughs> Oh, I want to thank you. Hey, what happened? Now we must take the coffins to the cemetery. You had better hide in the cellar. You will be safe for a while. Annette, remain with them and keep watch. Well, the funeral procession went off, but the guest of honor remained behind. That's when I really met Annette. She'd made us something to eat and brought out a bottle of wine. 
And where do you go now? Oh, I don't know. Pal, we're still making one little move at a time. You know, Annette, I, I don't think we can ever thank you enough for all you oh, did. Oh, I have my reasons. We would have helped any American, but well, especially I did not want them to capture you. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I bet you tell that to all the boys. It is enough that I tell it to you. Haynes, look out for this girl. Oh, I do not even know your name. Well, I'm Joe Haynes. Joe? Does that mean Rosette? Joseph Hines. Oh, what a lovely man. Hey, something's happening outside. Listen, shells are falling out there. The outfit's attacking. Look, look through the window. It's the back and they're coming. Honey, they're not coming, they're going. Down, the jerrys are pulling out. Boy, I think we made it. Our guy should be barreling through here after him. <laughs> now, now you will believe me? Well, uh, yeah, I guess so. But you will come back. Tim? He's got a girl on every time. All right, Downs, cut it out, will you? Don't you get me? You will come back. Grab your carbine, boy. The Jerry's are trying to hold that house across the street. Let's take a hand. You want to know something, Annette? I've got a long way to go, but something tells me I'll be back, too. Come on, lover boy. We got him in a crossfire. Well, I did come back. Annette says it was fate. I say I never would have met her if my squad didn't need dry socks. We argue about all the time, but neither of us care. We've been married almost ten years now, and believe me, that's the most serious argument we ever have. Of course, Sergeant Downs, who was the best man at our wedding, has his ideas, too, like Downs always said. Boy, when you're in a jam, just make one little move at a time. You'd be surprised where it leads you. Sure. <laughs> it led me right to the altar. Ask most anyone what they want out of life, and a great majority of the answers can be boiled down to just one word. That one word is happiness. Well, now, happiness is a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but basically, I guess you might say that it's the achievement of your goals. To be happy is to be successful in whatever you do. And in today's highly specialized world, training is the key to success. If you're a young man of service age, you can get free training worth thousands of dollars by enrolling now in your United States Army's new reserve for you training program. Now, under this plan, you can enter the course of your choice and be trained in such interesting fields as x-ray operations, photography, automotive maintenance, and communication. In all, there are over 100 courses to choose from. So for complete information on how you can benefit from this program, you visit your local United States Army recruiting station. Another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army, and this is Corporal Richard Hayes speaking, and inviting you to tune in to the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.